But before we get started, I just want to say a few things. Number one, I am not a dog trainer. I'm just telling you things that have worked for me with Faraby um, and with Bella and Oscar from the past. So this is just personal experience. This is not anything to be, you know, that I've tested with like thousands of dogs. I've literally done this with three and I've had really good results with all three. So that's the first thing. The other thing I want to say is make sure you have your dog's identification um, and everything like that up to date. So right now in the U.S., um, typically people shoot off fireworks around July 4th a lot and the weekend before maybe. Um, so make sure that your dog has this identification up to date. So make sure, look at their tag, make sure you have the right phone number, address if you have that listed. Make sure it's not like rubbed off, you know, they get worn out over time. So make sure it's clearly visible. Also make sure you have an updated picture of your dog. Um, because oftentimes our dogs change, you know, Fairby's hair changes from week to week, but also, you know, if you're not a person who takes, like, face on pictures of your dog, make sure you're doing that right now. Um, so take a good picture of your dog, the whole body, like from how someone would see it, if it was running down the road, for example, also of his face. Um, but this is just to prepare in case your dog get, did get out because of firework fear or whatever. Dogs go lost all the time because of loud sounds scare them and it makes them run away. Hey guys, I am editing and I realized I forgot to say something kind of important. Faraby <laughs> has something to say too. So I realized that I didn't mention, obviously Faraby is a service dog and that is why it's important for her to be okay with fireworks. Um, I don't ever plan for us to go somewhere to see fireworks on purpose, but I do know that I have been at different things like in my little town square that we used to live at before, um, where you know you might be there close to dark and on a holiday weekend, um, you know maybe participating in other little festival event things, and then they'll all of a sudden start doing fireworks and you haven't quite made it to your car yet. Um, so it's just important for her to be okay with that if we happen to get caught out for some reason. Um, yeah, but I don't ever plan to take her to anything like that, but you know, things change and there could definitely be a chance that we would be exposed to that. All right, so now I'm gonna get into what I've done to condition my dogs for fireworks. This has worked with Bella, Oscar, and it's working with Faraby too. So I feel like it's worth talking about. Um, what I do and what I have done in the past and what I'm doing currently is whenever there are fireworks going off, I feed them cookies basically. So you want the fireworks to become a pleasant experience by feeding them high value treats. For Faraby, high value treats are things like duck liver, buffalo lung, like that real nasty stinky stuff. Um, so that's, you know, what works for her. Every dog is different. You know what your dog's high value treat is, so make sure you have a lot of that on hand whenever we're you know, coming up on fireworks season. Um, but to my surprise, a few days ago, people in my neighborhood started shooting off fireworks. So uh, that is actually really good because I can train her around them before like, you know, if there's a really big firework event. So the first night, it caught us both off guard <laughs> because I wasn't expecting it. Um, but what I did was I turned the television up a little bit, um, not too, too loud, but up enough to where it was muffling the fireworks some. Obviously fireworks are super loud depending on how close you are to them. So it was a lot louder than the television. It was still, you know, kind of competing with one another. Um, Fairview was barking. This is what made me think about doing this at all. Fairview was barking. So I got the treats and I started giving her treats. And as the fireworks continued and she was getting the treats, she was not barking as much, but she was barking some, but you could tell that it had reduced quite a bit. So I turned the television volume down some. Um, finally, fireworks kind of stopped. Obviously this whole thing stopped for training and I thought we were just gonna be done. Come to find out the next night they did fireworks too. <laughs> so this night I was prepared um, because I didn't know they were gonna do it, but whenever they did, I immediately went and got the treats and I sat here and did the same thing, except for on this night, I turned the television off completely. And I had the television off so I could hear the initial sound of firework, 
before the big bang sound. And I would put a cookie in her mouth right whenever I heard the initial sound, so she would be chewing. And of course, whenever the firework went off, she was like, whoa. And she did try to bark, but her mouth was full, so she kind of couldn't. And that worked really well. So then what I did a few minutes later, this went on, fireworks apparently were going on for like an hour, I'd say. I don't know, it was a long time. Then what I did, after a few minutes of seeing, okay, she's kind of more okay tonight, I went towards the window where she could see them and gave her cookies, pointed them out so she could identify that sound with the firework in the air and, you know, kept talking to her, talking her through it, giving her treats, telling her it was good. You know, I was doing the, you know how you do, oh, yay, good, that's so good. You know, that, the way you talk to your dog. So I was doing all of that stuff. I'm getting her to focus on me. She knows, look at me, she knows focus, different things like that. So I was having her do that and then, you know, give her a cookie, all that stuff. Thought we were done. Okay, which is still been fine because she wasn't barking and she was more comfortable. Um, but then the next night, it didn't start up until we were about to go to bed. I always take her to the bathroom, you know, before we get to sleep for the night. I had to take her outside and it was like, okay, I know they've been doing them for like an hour at a time, so what am I gonna do? I can either stay up until they're over with or either I can figure out a way around this. So what I did was I started giving her treats again. This night, she was not as concerned. Of course, it always catches you off guard whenever there's fireworks suddenly, you know, and you're not expecting it. I don't care who you are, you're always gonna be off guard a little bit and like, whoa, firework. Um, but what I did on this night was I immediately went towards the window where she could see them and started doing the treats and stuff. And then I decided I have to take her to the bathroom. And so I put her collar on her with her identification, but I did not clip the leash to that. Um, I put another collar on her and clipped the leash to that. And I also put her harness on her and then I put a fail safe on that and hook that to the leash. So essentially she's going outside with two collars and a harness. <laughs> um, just because I was like, you know, there's no way. Number one, I felt like she was okay. But the other thing is, there was no way in hell I'm putting my dog in a position where she's gonna be able to run away if she's scared, um, because that would just not be good. But I did all that, and then I just opened the front door. I didn't take her outside or anything, I just opened the door, probably let a million bugs in, I don't know, it didn't matter at this point. It was just the point of making sure that she was exposed to that sound as close as possible and saw that it was okay. So I opened the front door and gave her cookies while the fireworks were going off. And then the fireworks stopped for a second and I was like, okay, is it safe to go outside? I don't know, I could hear people talking. So I waited a little bit longer because I had a feeling they were still gonna do them because it hadn't been a super long time. They started doing them again. So whenever they started shooting fireworks again, at that point, um, Fairby knows to wait until I tell her it's okay to go outside. So at that point, you know, I got myself in a position to walk outside the door and I told her it was okay. And I let her pee in the bushes by the house, which, she normally doesn't go there. That's not a place that's a pee spot. But I let her because I needed her to be close to the house um, and feel secure, but also to be exposed to fireworks was fine. I would have not necessarily picked to do that to her, but, you know, I mean, they were doing fireworks, she had to pee. So anyways, gave her treats. She actually watched the fireworks while she was mid-squat, so I thought that was cool. Whenever she got done peeing though, she did, you know, quickly walk back to the door <laughs> to go in the house. Um, she wasn't thrilled about being out there, but I feel like she did great. And that was last night. So tonight, you know, we'll probably do the same thing. I don't want to take her out in the fireworks setting at all. That's not gonna be my goal. I never wanna take my dog to a fireworks show. I don't want to expose her to that in a on purpose setting, but you know, it's kind of like that saying, when life hands you lemon, make lemonade. Well, we kind of had to do that last night because I couldn't let her just not go to the bathroom or have an accident or whatever because of somebody's doing fireworks. So that has worked really well for us. Um, I did a very similar thing with Bell and Oscar when they were growing up. Um, what I did with them though, we lived in a place where we could see downtown where they would always do fireworks for you know, New Year's, 4th of July, 
all the things you do fireworks for. And what I did with them was we went, we had a fenced in backyard. And what I would do with them is just open up the sliding glass door and us go on the patio and they could see it and hear it. And then they had an option to go in the house. Um, but it was a positive thing. So anyways, definitely high value treats. Make sure your pet's identification is up to date. Make sure you have an uh, updated photo of them and have the high value treats, try to power through it, try to tell them it's okay and reassure them and let them know fireworks are super fun, guys. And hopefully that'll help. Um, I know some dogs are just not okay with it in general and they need things like those um, thunder shirts or like anxiety medicine and things like that. So obviously if your dog is already to that point and you know, you know your dog, you know how scared it is or not, um, so maybe, you know, this might not work for all dogs, but I've had dogs that were pretty okay with random stuff happening around them. Um, Bella enjoyed fireworks, like I said. Oscar, he didn't, I wouldn't say he enjoyed them, but he wasn't afraid of them. He wouldn't go crazy barking. He wouldn't sometimes bark, you know, at first because, like I said, it catches you off guard, but he would, you know, have a nap through them and stuff, so it wasn't a big deal. Um, and Farabee, I feel like it's going to kind of be between the way that Bella was and Oscar was. Uh, Bella liked them and would actually actively look for them. Bella was weird, so if that says anything, I don't know. I think Farabee's going to kind of be like, yeah, I know what it is and it's not my favorite thing, but okay. Um, this obviously could change. She's just now one. This is only her... This will be her second 4th of July, but her probably first one she remembers. And New Year's, we didn't have much firework action. So, you know, this is probably realistically her second time that she's been exposed to fireworks. So I think she's doing good though. So anyways, I hope this has been helpful. Um, like I said, this is definitely not anything that I'm trying to have you scare your dog by doing. I'm just telling you what has worked for my dog and for me, and it has been a positive experience for us. Um, you know your dog better than anyone does, so if you feel like what I'm telling you to scare your dog, don't do this, obviously. There's no reason to scare your dog. I'm just trying to put put information out there for what has helped me and my dogs, um, and you know if it can help someone else, great. Obviously, if your dog's hiding under the bed, then do not do this to them. Do not make them have to experience something for no reason. If your dog's hiding under the bed, get under the bed with them if you can and give them cookies <laughs> and tell them it's gonna be okay. But you know, there's no reason to scare your animal, but if they are kind of just barking and they're not like hiding, but they're just not sure of what it is, this is something you could definitely try. So anyways, I hope this is helpful. Hope you're having an awesome week and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys.